fall. Yeah, I'm up. What's up, what's up everybody, hope you're doing well We're back to the channel My name's Tim McCartney, I'm a director Music video director And, uh, you know, editor um, Colorist, whatever you want to say Cinematographer And we are breaking down St. Laurent, making moves uh, In terms of lighting So the first scene, drone shots, Melbourne City, filmed those about three, four years ago. We won't worry about all the close-ups and stuff, but more about, um, yeah, for example here, let's just start with this um, first scene. So in this scene, we have two main sources, predominantly um, a Pave tube and a Forza 300. On camera left, we have the Pavo Tube 15X, which is providing that HSI, that sort of magenta pink tone, which is giving the shot a bit of character um, and a nice feel, uh, mu mu cinematic sort of feel to it. You know what I mean? Like obviously just using um, natural colors is uh, is fine, but we want to, you know, spice it up a little bit. So we definitely have a, a nice color here to, to provide a nice uh, color contrast in the scene. And on camera right, we have a Forza 300, um, which is being shot through. You can see the the frosted glass here. Obviously, it's not being shot through this frost, frosted glass, but uh, it's being shot through um, some glass on camera right, which is giving, as you can see, just here on the nose and this side of the face, like a real, a more of a neutral tone. But it's not so contrasted and different to the magenta it actually it just sort of subtly um mixes it in really nicely which is important and it also gives a nice uh, spill an even and flat spill and fill general fill light for the scene um, which we then complement with um the the pavo tube just giving it that nice kick so we have a nice duality here and um in terms of the direction of the clip i wanted that duality because this artist saint laurent you know he's got like a lot on his plate but he's also you know to me he's really and and a, a general nice kind of you know good good person um but has a lot of things going on especially even in this video where he's on the move making moves and things that things are happening so i just want to have that duality and i think it's you know in most people uh, we also have you know different kinds of personalities and things and um split split tone works well to accentuate this kind of emotion i won't go too far into the into the uh the reasoning behind the lighting but just how it looks and, and how we got there for sure so moving on to the next scene Um, it, the similar thing, you know, we've essentially got, that's where the Forza 300 is and it's spilling through. Um, we have the Pavo tube on this side, camera right, giving the, uh, that, that glow, um, towards the subject. And obviously, yeah, Michelle here, she's all lit up, um, with that Pavo tube. And there's also a light down here shooting through to the ground, giving a bit of um, backlight, which is just giving the, the room more depth than we actually have. It's a pretty big um, bathroom, but it's, you know, obviously like you want to just also get as much depth as you can, like shooting in my studio here, like, you know, um, it's, it's not that big of a space, but you know, you use a wide uh, angle lens um, and you use a bunch of different uh, lighting fixtures just to give that sense of depth um, <clears throat> and also just, feels more comfortable on on the on the uh the camera when you sort of are against a wall you don't have much space it is really difficult to um to convey this across you know so especially in the bathroom we want to make sure we have you know a wide lens um and also you know using the uh the, the different three-point lighting setup to just give us that that depth i really like this frosted glass it just helps so much in terms of um <clears throat> giving a really nice soft look and, and spill. If you don't have a, a big scrim or a big piece of material to shoot through uh, and you see some frosted glass, you know, be sure to use it. And yeah, so I mean, like just really quickly, we have, um, you know, an awesome setup here that's already been built for us. We have a ton of practical lights in the background. 
really just for effect. And then we have this whole crazy setup here, which um, I ended up getting St. Laurent to go inside of there um, because the lighting is just amazing. But um, we have a Pavo tube here, all right? We have one off camera, which is providing just a little bit of fill um, to the to camera left, um, which is, you know, doing an okay job here. I, I wanted it a bit stronger, but we were going in and out with the, with the steady cam with the gimbal. So like moving with the light, it was just myself and Max at the time. Um, this was actually before the, the call time. And we just, we, you know, we arrived and we, I just thought, well, this place looks really cool. Let's use it um, because we, we hired out the, uh, the apartment and obviously, you know, you get the valet service with it too. So, well, why not use both? Ah, third cup of coffee in the morning. Let's go. So, yeah, that lighting fixture is just fantastic in terms of practicality on a set, you know, looks really impressive. We had, I believe, yeah, the, what is it? See, see you can see the halo around the uh, sticks here. We had the um, one eighth premised. Uh, on the Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter on the Blackmagic 6K. So just little specs there. Um, you can obviously see the glow and it just has that soft look to it. So yeah, it worked out, but essentially for the lighting, yeah, we had the Pavo tube um, over here off camera, of course. Um, and it, yeah, it did its thing. And as we see, we'll continue on, there's a lot of like, you'll see um, the effect of it and how well it worked. But for this, it's quite a wide shot, but that's okay. So this is Bray. Shout out Bray, he's the actor for today, he's the narco agent. Um, this was all, I was gonna say natural lighting, but just lighting from the building itself um, within the apartment complex, the services corridor. And yeah, I mean, it's all top top lighting. Um, it could be LED or it could be like fluorescent tubes. Um, but it, what it did was just give a sense of reality to the scene. So I didn't want to actually add any extra lighting. And number two, we didn't have any, um, much time so you know i'm always racing against the clock uh i have you know four or five hours for shooting most most uh music videos i go to about six or seven sometimes i think we had probably about five five and a half hours for this whole entire scene in terms of setting up and packing down and everything um so that's that's cool um that we were able to get it done so quickly but you also have to make sacrifices and and the sacrifice here was made yeah obviously for time but it also yeah as i said it made us feel like we're in just reality like we had a pro mist filter on there we had a nice lens and a 6k camera so you get a little bit of a cinematic feel we did have a haze can with us as well but yeah this this to me looks so different from um for example you know this setup <clears throat> where you've definitely got a whole lot of um design lighting design and then you come back to hit a bray and it it, it kind of suits it's just like back to reality. Um, anyway, let's continue on. So yeah, as you see, he's inside of the uh, the lighting fixture, and you've got um, you've got a whole bunch of um, you know um, you've still got this like light over here giving this effect on the side of the face, and probably this one here giving an effect on the side of the face, and then a general halo from all sorts of. Is looking like a, a sun in here, just, you know, all lit up really nicely, but there is shape, which is really nice because the, all the fixtures are not in the same spot. They're all have, they'll have a little bit of distance between each other. Um, just like, for example, this, this tube over here, like when I get rid of it, you can kind of see on the side of the face, it just gets a little bit darker, but as I bring it back, um, it has a little bit of a difference and that makes all the, the difference in a, in a shot, um, uh, the different, the the alternating um distances from the subject and also power levels here they're all the same power levels all these tubes but just having a, a distance between the subject gives you that shape and that's cool so here we have um i'm just going to con constantly interrupt so yeah definitely check out the music video um saint Laurent making moves and watch the thing in in full um but obviously on the breakdowns so i want to break down every single little piece that i think is important um and how you can implement it in your own videos so here we have um it's still natural lighting but you, the really cool thing is the background like it's just so it's kind of blown out in a sense um he's sort of he's <clears throat> bray here is silhouetted <clears throat> and you really get drawn into the shot. We have the laser scope, which was um, helped with a bit of haze. <laughs> um, yeah, 
it was really well framed. We have a lot of power, you know, lines. We have, you know, acknowledgement. He's coming through the services corridor. Awesome. Setting up the scene done really well with just natural light, um, a one eighth pro mist black filter. It's actually the half pro mist warm filter from memory. Sorry, I'm going to re remember some sort of little technical things. Um, and as I do videos in the future, I'll definitely be like recording all the uh, data down just to make sure that I'm getting it, you know, a thousand percent. But just uh, out of memory now, I remember we had the shoulder rig, Blackmagic 18 to 35 um, Sigma F1.8 lens and the half strength Black Pro Mist warm filter. That's why it's really soft. And that's why you kind of get away with this natural practical lighting because you've got this filter on. So you've always got to make a decision when you're not really lighting a scene um, cinematically and just using natural light. Why? Okay, is it the story to make it look like it's reality? It's just, you know, Stark, it's just narco. He's going through, it's, it's sort of the plot line. Um, and number two, um, yeah, as I said, for time, we didn't have time. But make sure you've got like a pro mist filter, a bit of haze, and it makes sense. Okay, cool. Yeah, it was you can see here, like you know, I don't have to go into it. Um, but essentially, you've got a really well lit scene. Um, that's thirty five mil <clears throat> on the shoulder rig, which is nice. Um, and those practical lights just do a really awesome job. So yeah, here we go. That's the same sort of scene where he was, Saint Laurent was looking to the mirror, but now it's reversed, but it's still, it, obviously the lighting hasn't changed, but you've got a wider angle here. Um, and you have the Pavo Tube 15X um, with the HSI lighting from camera left, giving everyone that really nice pink look on the side of their face and body. And then you have the 300 spilling through here and just providing that really beautiful soft, um, fill light so it's really soft and beautiful um over here and it just provides us that you know that real um consistent um, natural soft lighting that fills the scene but it's also interestingly enough the frosted glass has like a, a cool effect on it because it's just a daylight forza 300 shining through it but it has like a bit of a tint and we also have a pavo tube down here which i think was probably on daylight as well but because of you know the, the white balance shift and everything like that it all sort of comes together as more of like a a green sort of tint rather than just pure white and i think that works you know <clears throat> obviously red and green are sort of complementary complementary in their own way red and blue you know red and whatever um yeah so you know you just got to think of these little light things in terms of design so yeah shout out to sam Cochin. you know he, he, he did well there um in terms of setting up the lighting there and um yeah we'll continue on mm. <clears throat> so i'm gonna have to bring it back <clears throat> excuse me Two, yeah okay this scene took about 50 minutes to set up reason being super wide um it was the first shot in the production and you always want to a good general rule a good friend adam sutati told me he said you know the first lighting setup or the first shot you know in general in a video production sets the standard for the entire production so if you put this like the level up here then the next shot, if it's down kind of here, you kind of go, oh, no, nah, it just doesn't have that same feeling. So you need to bring it back up or obviously increase it. But you can, that's always the base standard. So the first shot, you set the standard. If you do a really like oh, whatever kind of crappy shot, then your standard's here. So you always want to push the standard. If, even if it takes you a long time to set up the first scene, um, and also make sure you set up for the wide angle as best you can. Um, cause then when you punch in, um, you should have a, a nice lighting setup as well. Whereas if you get a shot where it's punched in, um, then go wide, you've got all these lighting fixtures in your, in your scene. So the general workflow is, you know, set the standard, give yourself some time to set up the first scene in terms of lighting set for the wide angle. And then you can punch in. And, um, as we'll see later, I kind of did a, a couple of different, um, changes to the, the close up scene, but it wasn't too different to, from what we already had. 
<clears throat> in the wide angle. So from here, I'll just jump into it now. We have ourselves um, a Forza 60, right? So it's, it's off, obviously off camera, but let's just, let's just, you know, for the diagram's sake, put it here. It's a soft box, right? So we've got the soft box, the Forza 60, um, and it has a, a grid, a layer of um, cloth, like um, muslin uh, material. It has the nanolite diffusion and then another layer of the material. So it's got like four layers of diffusion plus the grid. So it's pretty, pretty controlled light, very soft. It also has a CTO gel. I don't have the uh, 60B, so I need to use gels. Um, the gel actually has a really nice look to it for some reason. I feel like it's like a richer, warm light compared to what I've seen in the, uh, you know, 300B and things like that. But, you know, if I had a 60B, I'd be using that for sure. Um, but it's good. I've, I've made a custom softbox um, for the for my Forza 60. And that's, it's cool. It's cool to make custom lighting modifiers because it kind of gives your, your lighting like a little bit of a different and unique um, style that you prefer. So anyway, it's it's quite, it's warm and we can see it here on, on Laurent on the uh, ca on, on you know camera right and then we have a lot of fall off here which is really nice you want that shape right especially for a wide angle and <clears> on <throat> summer her leg here is is bright and then we have fall off on the bottom and we sort of have some really nice shot here with um michelle um the same thing so yeah that's essentially the uh, the main uh, key light uh, which is the Forza 60 <clears throat> underneath the couch we have the two pavo tube 15x's on rainbow shooting out some essentially effect light backlight just to give the uh, couch sort of this glow and um, you know you know just basically as you can see in here you've got practical lights and you've even got daylight coming out through here it just sort of adds dimension um, and a bit of interest to the shop that's really important in the background I have, where are we? Um, may as well do yellow again. We have two of these DJ lights and they're just sort of shining up against the wall here with red, um, providing like a fill. And they're really um, robust DJ lights. I got DJ lights back uh, before Nanlight and all these other companies came out with these really affordable LED solutions um, because they are LED lights. They have like 360 colors um, programmable. They don't have a dimming effect, but they, they're also flicker free. So I picked them up for a couple hundred dollars each and they're really strong. You can like throw them around DJ lights, right? Um, but I've used them for a lot of sets. Like they're reasonably powerful and you just turn them on and set the uh, color and it's like, well, cool. We've got We've got some light, so we just plug in and go. Um, they're all in like one little unit. So, you know, just just look, be on the lookout for all sorts of lighting. Um, Nanolite's got everything now, but if, you don't, if you're on a budget, you know, sometimes at a DJ um, place, you can go there. Like I DJ for 10 years of my life, you know, so I've, I always saw these lights. I'm like, why don't I use these for music videos? Um, so yeah, definitely um, keep an eye o open and, you know, your mind... Um, open to you know different lighting styles but you also have to consider with key lighting you really want high quality um, light because skin tones are very sensitive whereas you know the effect lights like these dj lights you can just put them anywhere and, and it works so we have those two dj lights at the back um basically you know uh, giving the scene a bit of a bit of color um and um feeling and shout out to max too he he moved this couch from this wall and flipped it so we actually have an amazing backdrop here um yeah so you know cinematography wise always just you know think about the set you know and then light it and then shoot it direct it and you get yourself a mad scene um there's a little pavo tube in here as well just giving a glow behind the cranberry juice i believe that the light itself um was just on daylight, but because it was shining through the cranberry juice, it gave it a warm or uh, red effect, which is really smart um, of, of Sam there. So yeah, we have um, the 60 on camera right. Um, and it's just a beautiful key light. And then we have the two effect lights, the the Nanlite power tubes under the couch, and then the DJ lights in the background, and then that little practical effect light un <laughs> behind the cranberry juice, and you've got your scene. It took some time to set up, but um, it was well worth it. Straight out the mud. I swear that's 
so that's the close up. We have um, the same setup completely, except we have a Pavo tube over here on the camera left outside of the frame, as you can see on Michelle's hair, um, Laurent's hand, and then as he moves into it, it goes onto his face, but also his hand too. You, when you have the close up, you can sort of just change over little, um, little lighting fixtures, but have the main key light the same and the background light the same, but you can, you know, you can kind of get away with it. Now, just to note, I've got it on um, HSI mode as like a blue color, but the saturation isn't turned up all the way. It's sort of probably about 50, 60%. Just to, just because we're, we're changing the continuity of the scene, you don't want to actually add like a whole new color in there, but you, if you want to give it some spice, then yeah, you want to get some color. But there's oft, I often believe that, you know, taking down the saturation is really um, important when you don't want to have like a super saturated uh, or super like high contrast look and a different look, especially in terms of continuity. Also with skin tones, you know, color takes away the skin tone. Um, so you want to kind of bring that back a little bit with a little bit less saturation, just like adding diffusion to lighting. It's like, yeah, you want like a powerful light, but you also want to diffuse it so it's not like, just white and black, um, super high contrast. But yeah, same lighting setup. That um, that Forza 60 over here, it just is so beautiful. The way it like shines off, you know, Michelle's hair there. Um, the side of the face, I mean, the gradation, you know, you've got the highlights kind of all where you need them. And I always do like this effect, you know, uh, this test, you know, with the nose. If there's like a nice contrast from the nose um, to the other side of the face, I mean, that cheek there, where are we? Let's just get rid of everything. If I just jump in here, you see the highlight on the cheek and then to the shadow, there's a real, it's just smooth. It's just like this light here. Like it's, you know, it's from here to here. It's, it, it, it might be quite strong on this side of the face, but it's, it's still smooth. And that's what you're, you're looking for, you know, cause then people don't feel like you've lit the scenes. Like this is just a natural look, but a really cinematic natural look. I need a lot of shape in the face, which is really important. So that's that scene wrapped up. That's uh, really special that, you know, you get the, the close up along with the wide. So how cool is that? We had a whole setup. This is all, you know, natural, whatever, just practical lights from the hotel. And we had a whole long corridor. There's nothing else you really need to do. The whole lighting setup is there. And, you know, we've got this warm Promis filter on there. We've got some awesome camera movements. We've got an amazing actor. You know, that, that scene's done. So yeah, um, awesome, right? Cool shot. You've got um, the same setup. You've got the the Pavo tube, um, 15x to camera right. You've got the shot through the frosted gla glass, which is a really subtle shot. You also have here a Pavo tube 6C, which is giving that glow and kickback from the basin, the basin is white, right? So you shine the 6C in the basin and it kind of reflects that light softly back to the subject. That was a good one from Max, he just threw the 6C in there and you know, he's like, hey man, we just need to do it. And you know what it's done? It's lit up the watch, the arm, the leg, the other arm, like it's provided so much um, more um, just beauty to the scene um, as compared to the scene here with Michelle, it's more of like that, you know, red glow effect, right? And then we bring it back um, here to summer and you have more of like a warmer glow and you can see the skin tone. So yeah, it's, it's cool. Like they're not exactly the same lighting setups, but th this is the idea, you know, if you want to add something, you add something subtle um, and it really just works just amazing. Can't get lighting better than this. Yeah, so obviously, once again, back in the lighting fixtures, you see, I mean, I didn't, we didn't create this. Um, obviously, you know, with massive budgets for sure, we'll, we'll do it. Um, but this is already there and, and, and you see, side of his face, awesome, super soft and nice. I love how on, on his fingers, on his hands, there's like a backlight and it really just adds, um, just contrast, you know what I mean? Contrast to the hand. Obviously all the practicals in there just add this really nice effect. You've got the um, the Pro Mist 
one eighth uh, black pro mist filter on there. So you've got like a nice glow, just as you see here in the shots um, in a studio, uh, you have that effect. So that's helpful. Framed up on the Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter, nice wide angle there. And you know, if, if, if as, as I was saying, like with the narco walking through the apartment, if the, the lights are already set up, then just go for it. You just have to understand that lighting, you know, is so important that you don't want to just do it because it's lit, but you want to do it because it's lit well um, and has a high enough exposure as well. It's very important. We're shooting like F 2.8. I think the ISO, I think I turned it up to like 3,200. You can kind of do that black magic. You either go like, okay, 400 native or like 25. I think no, sorry, it's 2,500. I think 2,500 is just a little bit nicer than 32. And there's not much difference in terms of exposure. So yeah, we're either 400 for certain scenes that we had enough lighting or um, 2,500 ISO, but there's that dual native ISO. So, you know, you can get away with it. And ISO is like, turning it up isn't a problem. It's just when you don't have light, even if you don't have light and you're like 400, there's like a lot of grain, you know what I mean? So just make sure you have enough light and your ISO levels shouldn't matter if you don't pass like 3,200 on, on black magic, for example. So yeah, how we got that, obviously, haze. Haze, the half strength pro mist black filter. Um, that's it. I mean, obviously you've got some awesome tube lighting all throughout this hotel. Thanks to, thanks to the hotel there. Um, yeah, it's cool. You know what I mean? Like, um, you just need a few of these things and the the wonderful uh, i think camera operated by Bilal for this one um got a really amazing scene um and just angle and line i love it that's uh can't wait for more and thanks to uh john fox for the prop guns as well um just bear in mind that yeah we had to get uh you know permits and things like that um to let everyone know that we do have real firearms in a public space obviously no bullets and things like that but you can tell that it looks like pretty realistic because yeah they're real um, but hired through a, you know obviously a professional hire company and uh the police were obviously notified um you know of of what we we're doing um, you need to make sure you cover all those um areas because you don't want any um, problems on set, um, but you also want to make it look really cool, which it does. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, just just running back to it, like this is kind of the lighting that I'm really proud of. Um, the only light we had, because we only had myself and Max at the time, this was the first, this was actually the first, shot of the day um the the complex apartment scene was kind of like the first main scene you know but here there was already so many practical lights all we needed was one pavotu 15x on uh and color matched to these other they were pretty warm it was probably like 3000 kelvin or something like that um to just match you know pretty much like you don't want to introduce a blue or a red or anything that's like match it right this whole scene's already lit so well um and obviously on the side of his face here yeah, it's just lit up really beautifully um and then we have sort of like a fall off you know we have some shape so some some darkness on on the side of his um left side of his face <clears throat> to the camera right so just one one pavo tube you know, 115X and just boom, just held it up there. Thankfully they have the frosted glass already on them. Um, I don't I don't need extra diffusion because we have, you know, it was about 100, maybe like 80% strength and kind of had it somewhat away from him, um, Saint Laurent. Uh, and it works just really well, you know, it's, um, it's, <laughs> it's epic. So yeah, once again, natural light, just all lights in the hotel. I mean, this obviously this hotel's like more luxurious one. So you've got like, you know, um, practicals under here at the bar. You have sort of like this LED strip that's shining light down. 
and it's really soft and stuff. Um, <clears throat> but essentially, far from that, you know, we wanted to make it look like it's just, this is the reality of it. You know, this is like real life. Whereas, well, like this is, this is one timeline, better said, this is one timeline in terms of like, the police, like he's like, you know, I want to cap, I want to capture this guy red-handed, blah blah blah. Whereas, you know, Saint Laurent's like I'm making, he's he's on his own time, you know what I mean? So he's got all the, the interesting lighting and stuff. So he's like really finessing, like really like living life on his terms. Whereas this guy's like, you know, by the book, trying to do the right thing. Um, and you've got this like just neutral flat lighting. I had to do a bit of color grading to make sure his skin popped out. Um, but apart from that, you know, just just use the same LUT and same kind of levels. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it sort of conveys that. Yeah, right. So the thing about this is it's, um, really terrible lighting uh obviously as you can see here we have um we have a whole area of his face which is all like mag magenta and pink sort of you know and then we have a whole area here which is kind of more green and stuff and he looks sickly like it's terrible right like this is when bad lighting um gets mixed with just you know high resolution cameras you really see all the flaws and stuff like that but for here it seems like he's kind of like he's picking up the phone right spoiler you know he's picking up the phone eventually he kind of blows up right so it's like he's no something's wrong like there's no one in the apartment he's made a mistake why is the phone ringing the phone's ringing he's kind of looking like dread has a lot of dread um, going on in his mind at the moment um did an amazing job uh bray did you know um he fantastic actor he looked you know like just fit the part really well and um you know so in this case once again like the lighting kind of worked you know what i mean like terrible lighting because he's just looking sickly and horrible but in, in other cases you definitely want to even just get that forza 60 with that custom softbox and just have it you know maybe like 30 percent just really close up and stuff but once again we didn't have much time um, in fact, I was actually downstairs um, getting the AMG, the, the G Wagon sorted out. So doing pro producing role. And I just told Max, I'm like, cause Max, I've known him for like, you know, 15 years and we, we, you know, we can, if, if one of us is on set, essentially we could just be like, yo man, can you just do the whole thing? You know, like it's like a backup. It's always good to have um, good, good solid friends and, and, you know, people who you work with that you can just rely on, just do everything. So I go, hey man, just direct and shoot this whole scene when he enters the apartment, this is the, like, I've got the storyboard and the idea of the concept, um, but this is what we need. And he, he just took over and got these amazing, so like, so good at the shots. Um, uh, and, and here we are. So with the close up, but obviously I said, just natural lighting, don't worry about the lighting, you know what I mean? So that was my call, um, but it, it worked out, you know, <clears throat> cause I kind of knew that even if the lighting was, was terrible, it's like his, his existence is now becoming terrible. <laughs> so it kind of fitted together. So yeah, here we are with um, the exterior scene, the first exterior scene. And we have practical lamp here, which is, I guess, give, yeah, giving a bit of um, almost backlight. Then we have um, the Forza 60 on the softbox, just shining through here, just giving a nice um, color, color matched kind of, kind of color matching with the apartment right with the you know so we're sort of still keeping it there if it was too cold and also crown casino um yeah i just wanted to keep it warm yeah but that's it we just have two lights here so practical and um the yeah the forza 60 which is cool let's keep it rolling and it works really well obviously here for you know his face and stuff it's just because the artist we want to keep lit really well, especially the skin tone at all times. Cause like he's the artist, the star of the thing, but he's also like making all the moves. So you want him to look the best. See you later, man. Mad. So here we are with another setup. Um, continuity wise, I just noticed now, um, yeah, obviously we've got key light coming from camera right, but at the same time, actually, 
he was facing he was over here with the phone call so technically it's the it's the same spot we just we haven't even crossed over the line so no it's it's perfect <laughs> um yeah so uh we have headlights on on the uh the g-wagon which is shining nicely against michelle here and also with summer um and then we have you know the forza 60 just beautiful just soft nice light and that's it you know, we've got the we've got the practical light here obviously you can see in the frame which is providing that hairline nice hairline shot so it's you, you got to work with what if you see something like, like like outside exterior light and it's really bright and it's in the shot just like work with it you know what i mean don't don't fight it don't try to like drown out the lighting with your own lights and stuff like that just really try to work with levels and positioning of lighting it's really important to um to make sure you can you can do that so there's that one too so we, in, interestingly enough um this is just with one paper tube um just like right next to, so like the camera's here and the power tube is kind of just hovering above um the ca camera so just pretty much directly with the camera because just the rainbow effect i noticed when it hits um like so let's say you got the power tube and the lighting hits like a, a fixture like a like the door frame it sort of refracts off the edge of it and spills in an like a chromatic abbreviation kind of um effect like it's just it just splits the colors up in an interesting way and that's what happened here because normally when you have just the rainbow effect right <clears throat> and you shine it on someone all the colors blend together as you can see here right but because it's hitting the top of the door it's kind of um like giving like this actual true rainbow effect where you've got some different kinds of colors on michelle there and it and it works really nicely so i was like oh hold it there hold it there keep it there good thing about the power tubes is you just pick them up like oh that that doesn't look so good um let's try there actually maybe there maybe actually that's it right and it all took me was just a little bit of movement so if you got someone holding a power tube it's like wow you can just like go you really um dial in the precise positioning and obviously levels and color temperature so quickly and easily it's just it's so amazing like where's tech where technology has gone um in the last five years with lighting especially and then this one um essentially we had um two power tube 15x's just behind the door here shining up at the subjects and just on that random uh rainbow cycle so um yeah <clears throat> i actually wanted a lot of a lot more uh haze inside the cabin but i think we ran out and that would have given like a really smoky effect and stuff but it kind of worked you know what i mean so the good thing about it is um you don't have to worry about all the exterior lighting because i turned everything else off obviously the practical still there but it just sort of like separates them from the black so they've got color and then everything else is black right so that worked really well and camera movement um and having them like pressing against the glass was just like some creative shot that was you know that I saw on a video and I, I aim to replicate it. That, just going back to that. Headlights work really well, you know what I mean? You put the headlights there in the shot. One, two, and they're just blasting, right? You know, you don't always want headlights right into your camera, but with the Promis filter, um, I believe we had haze too. We had haze spraying from this side. So it kind of diffused the lighting. Haze is so good, right? Especially in the cans, they work really well for certain types of um, scenes. Some people use vapes and stuff, but obviously if you've got the can there, it's cool. Um, Forza 60, I mean, that's just, like, it's just, it's just beautiful. <laughs> um, with that custom soft box, of course. Um, that's it. No other Pavo tubes or anything. So you've only got one Forza 60 in headlights and you've got your shot.
yeah and then just the main lights weren't here in this scene but it's kind of like just showing the power of the headlights and it's a, and it's, it's the end scene so it's like more mysterious but then you see here um on the camera here up here you got summer she's kind of lit up from that 60 she goes into frame and there's like that duality with the artist he's got to make moves does he have time well, you know whatever and then you've got like this illuminati um situation going on here which is totally planned um but you know nonetheless you know nice cross dissolve when appropriate is good not too many cross dissolves in my books you know i i think it's just like it can become just mushy but here it works yeah like a triple cross dissolve and that's it um and yeah I, you know couldn't do anything about it but you got an awesome reflection of the uh forza 60 with the custom with the grid you can see the grid there and stuff which is it's terrible um we're probably too tired you know it was about 11 30 um and everyone was kind of like over it but not really i mean as i said it was only a six hour shoot so maybe i was just over it and i was like oh, didn't see it it's stuff up but anyway it's credits and it's indie music video production um broken down for you on this channel um this is my yeah tim mccartney channel so basically gonna have a lot of uh, bts stuff and all that kind of stuff here but um yeah let's just uh, make sure that we see the credits awesome so yeah directed by myself um you had uh cinematographer max retro gaffer sam cochin um you had you know Bilal karam uh, on the camera you had bray Bonarostro as uh, the actor, John Fox, the armorer, best boy, uh, Ben Gillard, key grip, Dylan uh, Chincharov, you know, you got AMPM, car hire, photography by Justin Malone, Jaden Sims, uh, VFX, and Breezy. Yeah, so, you know, we just, we made it happen. And um, this is kind of the the lighting breakdown that, that I could do best for you guys at the moment. Um, in the future, I'll definitely be getting like, you know, some BTS still so you can actually see what's going on. But yeah from from what for what i can do on the screen i think you guys can take away from that and um just in just uh use those um apply those kind of techniques to your next set just really trying to get that shape um it's so important it helps so much but yeah uh, if you like the video please comment and let me know uh, what you thought about it also just like the video and subscribe to the channel that we really i really appreciate that um yeah but just stay tuned because i'm just going to be doing more of these kind of things also tutorials some video editing techniques and um maybe a bit of vlogging things like that on set but definitely a lot of behind the scenes and just uh, an insight into the world of um, music video directing uh, also commercial uh, corporate stuff as well but just anything to do with film and photography really but yeah stay blessed keep going wild out man tmc let's go